Good morning and welcome to the Daily Share where we pray the word of God and bring it to life in our lives. 1 Kings 18 verse 41 to 45 and I will be reading from the New King James Version. So verse, verse 41, then Elijah said to Ahab, go up, eat and drink for there is the sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And, he, and seven times he said, Go again. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, There's a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind, and there was a heavy rain, so Ahab rode away and went to Je Jezreel. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. I've gone into verse 46 there. So we're on the theme of it's not over till God's word manifests. It's that insistence in prayer. And like Jesus said, man ought always to pray and not to give up. So not only are we meant to be praying all the time, but we're also not meant to give up. If you set your eyes or your focus on a request, don't give up on that request until you get results for it. Now, you might be listening and thinking, well, yeah, but that's easier said than done. Um, and yes, I'm, 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 I'm bound to agree. I'm, I'm inclined to agree. Well, a few months ago, I would have agreed. But now I realize um, that with through through intense study of the word of God and, and through meditation and, you know, like God said, we've got to be constantly, this word shall not depart out of, thou, of this, what does it say? This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. We've got to be constantly stating the, the, the word of God. That is praying, guys. Um, praying doesn't mean you know, going to a designated room and kneeling and, you know, closing your eyes and being in a, a specific body posture. No, when you're constantly speaking the word of God, you are praying. When you're constantly coming in agreement with what God has said, you are praying. When you're constantly um, meditating on what God is saying, you are praying because after all, that's what he told us to do. Basically, praying is when you're constantly, praying is just um, making a request to God. And so when you constantly keep repeating his word, you're you repeating his instruction, right? And that's the way angels respond. They respond to the commandment of God and the commandment of God is his word. So in case you're thinking, well, I don't know how to be praying constantly. No, you don't have to be using your own words. Memorize scriptures and recite scriptures over and over. Those very scriptures that we love so much. It, it's not so much about what we say vocally but more so how much how they sit in our hearts if the word of god isn't quite settled in your heart then you still have some work to do because there are certain words of god that become so obvious to you that become so real in your heart it's like you're already living in those and in some cases you may even dream those words of god but if that word of god is not quite if you've not quite if your spirit has not quite received it yet then don't stop right but also don't stop until you see a physical manifestation so here the prophet um elijah um he this is when he prayed for the rain to come again and remember we've it's been spoken later on in the new testament that um elijah was no man different from us in other words he had temptations he had he had he was a man just like us but he prayed for the rain to stop and it stopped and then he prayed for the rain to come back and it came back but look at this is the description of when he prayed for the rain to come back he insisted, he prayed and got his servant to go and check seven times. Now, you also need to bear in mind that we're not told um, how far in between the checks that was. It could have been hours. All we know is the servant was sent seven times to go and check if there was any sign of any cloud in the sky. Um, and he, he kept coming back to say, no, there's nothing. No, there's nothing. No, there's nothing. No, there's nothing. No, there's nothing until the seventh time. Can you imagine what would have happened if it stopped maybe at the fourth time? Maybe if, he, if Elijah gave up praying and thought, ah, forget it, you know, I've tried five times, it's not going to happen. Maybe I'll try again next week. No, you keep trying. And again, this reminds me of times of fasting, especially the sort of longer, even short term fasting um, seasons can be extremely challenging. Uh, not so much in the food itself, but the, 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 the very arguments going on in your mind um, with, 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 
you know, the kingdom of darkness constantly feeding into your spirit that, oh, you know, why are you doing this? This is a bit pointless. Give up already. Do you really think God is going to answer you? You've suffered this problem for so many years. This problem has been in your family, in your bloodline for so long. Do you think you're going to change anything? You start to have feelings of doubt. You start to wonder what you need to be rebuking those with the word of God. If, if the kingdom of darkness is constantly telling you, oh, give up already. You said man ought always to say, to pray and not to give up. Just give it back the word. The, key, the, the, the entities of darkness, they don't know what to do if you give them back the word. How do we know that? Jesus did that to Satan himself, the first rebel. He kept trying, the devil tried to tempt Jesus to, to eat bread soon after his fast, which is not safe. And Jesus said, no, man, man ought always to pray. Uh, sorry, man shall not live by bread alone. Uh, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So there's another word to use during your time of prayer and fasting. When you're tempted to eat and uh, you have to say it back, you just have to say to the devil, men, men shall not live by bread alone. It is written, men shall not live. I find that if you just do it exactly the way Jesus did, because that's exactly what he was doing. He was showing us what and how to do it. Just say it the way, the way he said it. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That sets you, gives you a refocus. It, 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 um, it causes those little evil demons to give up for that time and go back. They'll come back. They will come back. When Jesus was fasting for 40 days, he was tempted by the devil in all that time. Of course, we're given an account of some of the temptations towards the end of the fast. But the Bible, the scripture does state that he was tempted in when he went, he went into the wilderness to, to, to fast and he was tempted of the devil in that period. The devil tries very hard to take you off that course of prayer and fasting. Why? Because God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. When you go on prayer and fasting, every time you feel like giving up and you remind yourself, no, God, I'm doing this for you. I want you. My, 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 uh, to, what does the, what does Psalm say? There's a Psalm that says as a, as a, as a deer longs for the water brook, so my heart longs for you, Father. That that's at the end of the day, even if you're going, you're trying to break evil altars, even if you're trying to to repent, whatever you're trying to do, why are you trying to repent? Because you want to get back with your father. You want to be back in good books with your father. So your spirit, your heart is longing for the living God. You want him. You're prepared to give up food just to seek him and the rewards that's going to come as a result of that. So never ever lose sight or perspective of that. You gain rewards for, for seeking God. The Bible says God is a rewarder of, it says that the, he that comes to God must believe that he is. So you are fasting because you believe that God is the only true God. And then you're all, and, and that he is, in other words, he is God and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I can, you know, prayer and fasting, there's different ways of, of diligently seeking God, um, like just constantly, re, you know, reviewing his word and meditating on his word. But prayer and fasting in itself, because of the way you have to constantly get yourself back on track, the way you have to constantly repent, the way you have to constantly remind yourself what the word says, that is diligent. Whatever your level may be, for some people, diligence may mean a whole lot more. For me at the moment, this is what diligence means. Now, I'm not saying this to share my opinion. I'm just saying that we are all at different levels. And remember, as we work out our own salvation, um, we, we walk in the, at the level we're at at the time, as long as we're doing what's guided in the Bible right? As long as we are giving in our time of prayer and fasting, as long as we are praying the word of God, that's the best way to pray, just with the word of God. Um, and as long as we are just, you know, you, you could just be in a time, in, in a constant state of repentance. Yes, we'll have moments when we lose it. Yes, we'll have moments when we feel like giving up. Yes, we'll have moments when we think, oh, forget this. God is not going to answer. Those are moments of weakness, moments of lack of faith. We repent over those and we bring ourselves back to God and carry on as intended. You dedicated your to your God a particular length of time, three days, two days, one day, one week, 10 days, whatever the case may be, whatever you dedicated to God, you pray for the Holy Spirit to help you see it through until the end. And as you do that, you keep giving back the word. Every thought that comes to your mind, give it back the word of God to counteract that thought, right? And as you do that, you, you, you're believing that Jesus said, man ought always to pray and not to give up. So you're not going to give up until you get what you were looking for. Even after the fast, you're constantly reminding God of his word concerning what you asked for until you see it manifest. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.